Absolutely. I, I am a uh, gun carrier. I have a concealed weapons permit, so I legally um, am able to be armed. Did you have it with you? Or did I you did um, at the time. Um, we had just arrived from Des Moines. Um, it was in the hallway of the house in a bag. Um, I was scheduled to leave the next morning uh, back to Arizona. Um, so the gun was in my possession uh, until I was in the car. Um, it was a two-hour car ride. I put it in my bag, and I put the bag in Immediately upon arriving in the house, I put my bag right by the door. And when you grabbed the gun, was it an intent to warn or was it an intent to actually, you know, did the training kick in? How did that go? Um, when I initially got into the house and then retrieved my gun, the only thought I had was if they're attacking me, they're probably attacking my stepfather. So my initial reaction was get out there and see if he needs help. Um, arriving back out there, um, the scene was unthinkable. One of the suspects, the, uh, the people who were walking down the sidewalk said they were attempting to render aid to your father when they were shot. Any, was even one of them doing that, do you think? No. My mother was the only one that was giving aid. So this whole thing ensued, if I remember this story correctly, some young, these teenagers, high schoolers were walking down the street. You could hear them in your home. They said they were singing rap rap lyrics and things like that circuit. Can you talk about that, what, what you heard? Or? Myself? Uh, no, my okay. parents or everyone wants to discuss that. No, my wife and I, we were standing out in our driveway cleaning our, our vehicle because they had just come back from Des Moines. Uh, and it was very clear the phrase that they were using the uh, racial slur. Uh, when I approached them, I did not approach them in any type of a mean way. Uh, I, I, I work with young adults every day in my career. Uh, I approach young adults every day in my career. Uh, there was nothing threatening about the way I approached them. Now, it's just not okay. And it was just something that I didn't feel that I needed to stand in my driveway and have to be subject to. Um, especially since this has happened in the neighborhood before. Um, the only thing I would like to say is that the community of Glenwood, we realize this is not the whole community of Glenwood. They have been very, very helpful to my family and I. Um, they've given us a lot of support, and we surely do appreciate that. Um, and, and the biggest thing that we want to make sure people understand that racial slurs are not okay in Mills County. And there have been times throughout this whole procedure where maybe the impression has been given that it is okay to use racial slurs. It is not. Uh, the community understands that. Um, the community wants this to be handled fairly, just like everybody else does. So the dropping of charges against everyone involved in this incident is, is sends the message that racial, how does that sound? What message does that sound? You, you have to figure that, you know, you take that however you want. Um, the one thing that I do understand is, regardless of, I do know I was hit and had, and had fractured my eye uh, because I did not want to listen to the word, the N-word, at my residence. Yeah, I just had one follow-up. Well, first of all, I was saying, yeah, you know, you're saying that these kids were more or less saying that it was it's used as slang. I mean, you, you tell me this racial slur is not acceptable even when younger kids feel it's a slang. I, 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 I don't. Go ahead. I just want to make it clear these were not children. The individuals that were charged and the individuals that were the assailants were 19 and I believe 22. So to refer to them as children is not appropriate. It's not the case. But you, you refer to them as now thinking it's okay to, to do that. I mean, how, have you talked to them? How do you know that to be a fact? Uh, through our investigation throughout this case. I'm sorry to interrupt. No. So the question I just had, sir, you know, nowadays in the culture we live in, with these young people, is that appropriate to say? These young people, okay, but I remember 
that we cut this case. They're saying they're pretty much walking down the street singing rap lyrics. You know, the rap songs that you hear that all the time. They're saying it wasn't throwing at you. You just happened to live on that corner. You talk about that. You said this happened before me. They said you just, they didn't know you even lived on that corner. Um, I can't speak for what they're thinking. I, I'm sorry. Um, in my opinion, a racial slur is never okay, uh, regardless of who's saying the racial slur, regarding of who the slur is directed at or not directed at. I would like to think we have not gone backwards so far in this country to think that somebody making the phrase is okay, because it, it's not. It's not, in my opinion. Do you think that the community is healed through all this? What do you think? What's the status right now? I can only tell you that the community has supported our family um, through this whole thing. Now, I, I don't know to say the community is healed. You know, I, I can't speak for the community. I only know that the support that they have given myself and my family. Sir, last question from me. Do you see yourself staying in this community? You okay staying in this small community where it's obvious there aren't many minorities here? Sure. You feel comfortable continuing to you know live out your days in this community? You know, I, I I'm very fortunate. I'm an educator that has had a lot of success with young adults. Um, Glenwood, other than this incident, has been very good to my family. Um, as long as I can be assured that. Our safety is just as important as everybody else's safety, then we don't have a problem being here. Um, you know, I, I'm at the end of my career. When my wife and I first came down here, we came down here to finish my career. Um, I, I guess the big thing on that is if we know that we can be here and our safety is as important as anybody else's safety in this community, then we don't have a problem being here. Brooke, can you talk about the, the dismissal of the charges and what that means to you and <clears throat> for getting your life back together after all this? Um, mixed feelings. Um, you know, for the last 90 days, um, I've been perceived as a criminal. Um, that's probably the biggest travesty in this whole thing, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, they paint a picture of you as being a criminal when you justifiably protect yourself and your family. Um, that's, that's tough for me. Uh, the pictures, um, the, the printing in the paper, um, the inaccuracies that were put in there. Um, and I know there was nothing coming from our camp and that was intentional. Um, but trying to get past this and move on, tough pill to swallow right now, um, you know, Tomorrow's another day. We just we wake up and we keep moving, and uh, that's what I'll do. How about you, sir? Do you have concerns about your parents staying in this community? Um, well, they're my parents. I always have concerns for them. Um, yes, I, I do have concerns, um, but I would have concerns wherever they are. Um, Glenwood, as a community, is not unsafe. It's just like any other community. There's, there's bad apples everywhere you go. Uh, I would say that the support that we've received, um, it, it's been encouraging, to say the least. Um, you know, when this all happened, I, I couldn't wait to get out of here, and I couldn't wait for my family to get out of here. Um, but seeing the support and people backing us up and understanding what really happened, makes it a little bit easier, but at the same time, um, you know, I want my family to be protected just like anybody else here. Um, until we feel that that's going to happen and is happening, yeah, there's always going to be that doubt about safety. So there's an old saying, where do I go to get my reputation back? Uh, how do you look at that? I mean, do you, what would you want to tell people about, you know, in the context of what happened about 
you now? Well, the good thing about me is um, I have a tight circle. Um, those people within that circle know who I am, uh, what I'm about. Um, you know, I know I've been in the media in the past. Um, you know, I grew up in Des Moines, went to Iowa State. Um, being in the media was never a big deal to me, so um, perception wasn't uh, a, a key factor in defining myself. Um, what would you want to tell people now? I would, I would tell people now, um, stand up for what you believe and what is right. Um, never give in and never give up, no matter what's being said to you. If you're right, stand on your own two feet and fight. Well, I can't comment on what they were thinking when they dismissed those charges. Um, I can only comment on the fact that this is the first time and the only time that my client's side of the story has been told. Nothing in any of the reports, nothing that was ever done prior to today's date has been given to the county attorney. Um, my Hutch has never been interviewed. Hutch has never given a statement. No one has ever talked to Randy prior to today. Um, so there, the dismissal of the charges, I believe, were done um, without the benefit of knowing the other side of this. And in some instances, that is the bad part about the justice system. Uh, their cases are proceeding to trial in the same track as my client's case. So it's important that to my side of the camp that we maintained our silence until the charges were completed. Uh, so the county attorney had to do everything that she did based on the information that was given at the time. And basically no information is what was given from our camp. Does that answer your question? In, in, in say some would argue that it doesn't matter what may have been leading up to it, a person doesn't have the right to come and shoot someone else. If they're this is just from the other side of saying that they're sitting there doing nothing as they were saying. You're saying that, that wasn't the case at all. That wasn't the case. And it came out in testimony that that wasn't the case. And I think if you read um, the information that was released, you can glean from that that the, they believe that that was not the case. The only thing I would like to say is, Earl Beecham's a good man, and anybody that knows Earl Beecham knows he's a good man. And because he was protecting me, he's had to go through a lot of things over the last 90 days. Um, he did not deserve any of the things that have happened to him, but the best part about this whole situation is we don't have to worry about whether or not he goes to jail because he doesn't deserve that and he was doing things uh, that he felt he needed to do to keep me safe and I'm just glad justice did work for Mr. Beecham in that way because a lot of things that we may deserve but that was not one of him for him to be found guilty so you know we thank God for that and um, one thing we are we're survivors and somehow some way we'll pull our bootstraps up a little higher and figure out a way to make this happen for us. So we thank you folks for coming today and uh, appreciate you letting us say what we need to say. Thank you.